In this video, we're going to trigger a VRA subscription with a day two operation. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Welcome back. In the previous video, we saw these two subscriptions triggering when we created a new machine by requesting a deployment from our blueprint. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at what happens when a user performs a day two operation, also known as day two action. So let's jump into the lab environment and take a look. Okay, here is our deployment from the previous video. You'll recall we uh, requested a deployment from the blueprint called VMW-Subscriptions, and we could actually watch the deployment as it was unfolding. We went to the History tab, and we could see each of these different steps that was taking place. But our machine is now done being built, and some time goes by. So that was day zero, day one. Now on day two, the user decides that they want to power off the machine. Well, let's take a look at uh, what that would involve. So the user could go to the deployments tab, pick this particular deployment, go to the topology tab, select the machine that they want to power off, go to actions and choose power off. But please understand that this day two action of powering off a machine is not going to trigger this subscription. This event topic, the one that uh, triggers in response to day two operations like power on and power off, is not an event that's defined for the individual machines. Rather, this is defined on the deployments. So if I were to power off the machine, uh, as far as I've been able to tell, there is no event to detect that. There is no event you could set up a subscription to respond to when a machine powers off. Instead, what you have here, let me actually uh, close the deployment and go back to the main screen on the deployments tab, where as you can see, this is the whole deployment. And if I go to actions here and choose power off, I'm not powering off a single machine. I'm powering off the entire deployment. And that's what the event is defined on. This subscription here called day two action requested is going to trigger when I choose power off. So let's try that. Powering off in three, two, one. We'll click submit. And now the machine's powering off. As you can see, our deployment is now powered off. Let's go over to orchestrator and see what happened. Over in Orchestrator, let's refresh our workflow runs, and you'll notice that we now have a third workflow run. So this first workflow run was for the pre-provision. The second is for the post-provision. And this newest workflow run, if we click on it, we'll discover is for the day two action, the power off that we just did on the deployment. So if we click on the variables tab, again, we see all the metadata that we saw before including, let's see if we can find the topic ID. So there's the topic ID, deployment.action.pre. So before we, before the day two operation is actually invoked, we enter this particular, or this event triggers, deployment.action.pre. So we see all the same sorts of metadata that we saw before, and we also have the input properties variable that we saw before. Again, that's the payload that's getting sent to your VRA workflow. And it's got many of the same things that we saw in the previous video. But if you look real closely here, you'll notice one piece of information does not appear here this time. It showed up in the previous two examples when we were provisioning a machine. But now that we're doing a day two operation, there's no variable here called custom properties. And that's because if we go over to Cloud Assembly and look at the definition for the event topic in question, let's find that one, it's day two. 
Here it is. If we look at the definition of the event topic that triggered, you'll notice that the schema is different than the schema for when we're provisioning a machine. Um, and one of the key pieces of information that's not in here is the custom properties. The custom properties apply during provisioning events, but not in day two action events. All right, so now that you know that, it shouldn't surprise you when we go over and actually look at the workflow run. If we, let me scroll up, if we go over to the logs tab, if you compare this output in the logs to the output in the previous video, you'll notice that there's far less information here because there is no custom properties um, data in the schema when the event is um, deployment action pre. Okay, but otherwise, with the exception of that uh, one little tidbit of info about custom properties, you can see here that responding to day two operations is very similar to responding to the original provisioning events. Join me in the next video where we'll trigger a VRA event subscription by destroying a machine.